two, one. All right, so EM propagation. So what are these particular waves that are propagating throughout? Now, I'm going to make a few assumptions. If you're going to be studying this, you're going to have to be familiar with some of these concepts. So number one, you should be comfortable with electric fields and magnetic fields. Now, number two, you should also have some kind of an idea that these electric and magnetic fields, okay, have kind of a resistance, okay, and we were capable of measuring them with regards to these two constants, which is the uh, permeability constant and then the permittivity constants, okay? So this one is with regards to magnetic fields and this one is with regards to um, electric fields. Now, these two, okay, within, once you understand them, you will know that our waves, so electromagnetic waves, are propagating at the speed of light in free space, so in a vacuum. And that's really what we're interested in, right? The propagation of these waves through vacuums. Now, of course, they can also propagate through other mediums as well. Now, if you want kind of a deja vu on this, I'll put up a link up above there. All right, so that's what you have. Now, once you understand these concepts, then you can kind of shift over and understand how do these electromagnetic waves okay, get generated and also how do they propagate? Because it is unlike the waves, kind of which are mechanical waves, which pass through various mediums and they're using particles within those mediums, right? So various molecules, particles, etc. So if you take a regular wave, right? So something that we can visualize. So here is one example. This is from PHET. Okay, so the website, the Colorado website, so huge thumbs up. I'll put the links in the description below. So, you know, they have created this and as you can see here, so these particles are moving up and down and then you can see this wave propagating through and obviously energy will propagate along with it. Now, this is a transverse wave that we have in here. So not very difficult, right, to be able to understand these waves. Now we can calculate then periods, we can calculate frequencies, we can calculate wavelengths, okay, and we can calculate the speed of the actual wave itself. But hold on a moment, if you have a vacuum, then how in the world, okay, are these electromagnetic waves propagating through these vacuums, right? So that's the ultimate question, and I want to give you the intuition behind it. So we have to take a little bit of a step back. All right. So our key is going to be moving charges. Now, charges, okay, within here, so they're not necessarily maybe particles, although they can be part of particles, okay, but moving charges, okay, that we have, have some kind of an idea behind, okay, the creation of electric fields and magnetic fields. So let's go back to this very simple example, which I want to be able to illustrate to you and then give you the intuition. Okay, as you're going through this. So let's imagine we kind of am plotting X and Y axes in here. It doesn't have to be X and Y, but I'm just plotting it just for the sake because it's a planar graph in here. And if I would put, so let's say I would put a charge here. So this would have been, okay, a charge, maybe like an electron charge. And now I'm going to put the opposite charge, okay, on exactly the same but opposite side right here. Okay, and I'm going to call this, you know, Q of a proton right here. These two charges in magnitude, let's say that they're the same. So if they're the same, now let's see how well you remember how to calculate throughout, for example, the electric field at a point. Now, these two, let's, for the moment, let's think that they're stationary. So if they are stationary, we can now find the electric field at any point, right? So now I'm going to pick for convenience, you know, let's say a point, maybe which is on the x-axis in here, I could pick an, any other point, but I just want to be able to show you, right, that and remind you of the electric field and how it actually kind of looks like. Now electric fields, okay, so they're imaginary, but now they're imaginary, but real in the sense that if we had a charge in there, so remember electric fields, are defined with respect to a positive proton, okay, that you would have in it. So which means that they have a direction and they have a magnitude. Now, so with regards to that, so I'm going to now take the first one right here, which is the charge on the electron. So if I wanted to find the electric field with respect to this, now because this is an electron, then this is going to be attracted, okay, towards, because it's a, with respect to a positive proton, that would have been the electric field Okay, with respect to that electron. Now, if I take the proton now, now 
proton is going to repel, okay, and what it's going to do, it's going to repel in this direction. So what I'm going to have is something like this. And now between these two, right, so because they are uh, two charges, two electric fields, so they are two vectors. So we're going to be able to add these two vectors and notice that the, because this X component is in this direction, this is in this one, so these two components will cancel and it will really just have the Y component. And that Y component is going to tell us that the electric fields, well, in this case, it would have been upwards. So that would have been the electric field at that particular point. And you can now do this and create a field at every single point that you wanted. But I just wanted to do one. So we know that we have electric field present there. Now, if these charges were moving, right? So if they're moving, which basically would mean that we now have a current, the electric field would change at that point because the charges would no longer be stationary, but they would be moving. So if they're moving up and down, etc., then this electric field would be changing in size. Okay. Now let's assume that it, they're moving in that Y direction. Okay. They're not moving all over the place randomly, but they're just moving up and down. So that electric field would either get bigger okay, or smaller and then maybe reverse depending if the charges would reverse as well. Now, if they're moving, that means that there might be a current. So here, let's assume that there would be a current and let's make the current, which means that the actual charges are flowing in this direction. This is the Okay, conventional current, which is with respect to the protons. So if that is the current, okay, and let's say it's flowing in that direction, what would that tell us about the actual magnetic field at the exact same point, at this point? Would there be a magnetic field? The answer is yes, there would be if the charges are moving. So you have now an electric field and a magnetic field okay, at a particular point. So there would be two components. Now, what about the direction? If you're moving upwards, as it is in here, so by the right-hand rule, what that would tell us in here that this, now, of course, this is at that point, our actual magnetic field would be into the page and not out of the page, again, because of the right-hand rule that we would have. So let me now show you this in three dimensions so that you can have a view of how exactly would this look like. So I'm going to kind of show you this right here because I've kind of set this up for us. So we have our okay, electron, our proton. So you can see here, so this is in the Y and X direction. You can see the current there that you have that's in gray on the left. Okay, That would be the current that would be moving. But if it's stationary, our electric field would be drawn as it is. You have those two components and then you have your vertical one. And now if you put your magnetic field within here, it'll be difficult to see into the page, but in three dimensions, okay, it would look something like this. Now notice the Y is now flat, okay, so it just, and then the Z direction or the Z direction is upwards and the X, as you can see there. And then you can see, okay, where the magnetic field would point. So if you take a look at this, okay, so this magnetic field and the electric field, they are actually perpendicular to each other. And that is at one point. But this would be at every point. And now, if the charges would start to move, right, you would have this magnetic field. If the charges are stationary, there is no magnetic field, but there would be an electric field, but it would be static, not moving. So the whole idea of the electromagnetic waves, the creation of them, is charges that are moving. And in particular, if they're accelerating, if they start to move, you're going to have both electric and magnetic fields. And those electric and magnetic fields are going to be changing. And if electric fields change, then we know by Maxwell, okay, so someone who has studied okay, way, way back and kind of predicted this, that moving charges okay, will induce and have a changing electric field. That changing electric field automatically induces a magnetic field and that changing magnetic field induces an electric field. And therefore, so all the way around, it starts to propagate those fields all the way through. And that is really neat to see. You're seeing it here at one particular point. Now, of course, if the actual current changes direction, so if instead of this direction, okay, what we would have is we would have the opposite direction, 
So what we would have, therefore, we would have these. And I can now take these off. And this would now switch direction in this way. So as the charges are moving and flipping, you would have your electric and magnetic fields, the directions flipping as well, and magnitudes flipping as well. So that is really neat. And again, that's just at one point. Now, what if we do this at multiple points? Now, for convenience, I'm not going to do this at multiple points, but I'm going to do this on the x-axis so that we can see at least one of these waves and how it's going to start to propagate. So here it is. So I have now a simulation for you. Now, first, I put it in terms of particles because particles are easier to understand. So if we have now particles, okay, and a wave is propagating, so these particles, the way that they would move, you would see them moving and you would be noticing that, oh, this starts to look like a wave, right? So as it goes through. But we don't have particles throughout, okay? So in free space, at least not that we think so, Okay, so we have basically free space. It's not a medium. It's basically a vacuum that we have. And this vacuum, how we can imagine it, is changing electric and magnetic fields at a point. So first, here I'm going to just designate the actual magnetic field that we would have. So here it is. So here is, my apologies, the electric field. So here's the electric field, right? So the exact one that we drew but now you can assume that in the y direction, the charges are now moving. So we have a current which is flowing. Now that charges, they would be AC current. So it'd be alternating current. And if they're alternating current, the charges goes back and forth, back and forth, and therefore creating these electric fields that are continuously changing. And since you now can take different points, you will have different electric fields. And the induction, okay, so the actual electric field Okay, that starts to propagate through is also now creating the magnetic fields that you have. So it's not just by the static and the actual charges themselves. The electric and magnetic fields are inducing themselves to each other and then they start to propagate. So I'm going to now remove the actual particles and all you're seeing is now the electric fields that you have. Now in three dimensions, okay, so this would look like this. This again, it's on the flat. And you can see that, that it's basically in the X and Y plane. So as you're having that through, okay, so this is your plane. And this is the propagation that you have of these electric fields that you are carrying in. And this is the wave that gets created and it gets propagated through. And it's no longer the particle ones, but it's the actual fields that are changing. But as we've noticed, we also have a magnetic. So an EM, electromagnetic wave, is composed of two components, the electric field and the magnetic field. So now if I do this as well, so I can go back within here. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to bring back the particles. And now I'm going to bring the other particles okay, within here, except, so imagine that now this was in the actual perpendicular space that we have. So in the perpendicular space, so within here, so there you go, that would be your magnetic field. And it is perpendicular. So notice that they're at 90 degrees to each other. And it's beautifully shown here in this simulation. And that's how the wave starts to propagate through. So the key is these moving charges that they're accelerating and decelerating, they're changing. So it's like a changing current, the AC current which will start to generate this all the way through. And it's really neat to be able to see this. Let me turn off the particles and now just see the fields, okay, interchanging. It's pretty magnificent. Now, of course, we don't see this, right? Now, some of them we do, like light, okay, which is the visible light spectrum, okay, that you will know. So light is just one small little spectrum, okay, of these electromagnetic waves, and you'll learn about many of them. And they're propagating really fast. And notice that in this case, they also have a period. They also have a frequency. They have a wavelength as well. And the, that particular wavelength okay, and those frequencies define the speed of it. And for electromagnetic waves, they are moving at the speed of light. So you may recall, and that speed of light, okay, we know was this right here. And what's really cool 
that at a particular distance, so as you get far, far away enough, you will notice that if you take the magnitude of the electric field and divide it by the magnitude of the uh, magnetic field, okay, at that particular point, and you're dividing these two, you're going to get the speed of the propagation back. Now, you may recall that the speed itself was equal to lambda times frequency. This, of course, still holds. But our speed for electromagnetic waves is the speed of what we call light. But in reality, it's the speed of an electromagnetic wave. Just some of them have different wavelengths and different frequencies as you're carrying it through. So coming back to the simulation, okay, so if that simulation is right here, okay, that we have, notice that this will now make it very clear that they are perpendicular to each other. I'm just drawing the actual planes and that's where the fields exist to each other. Now, if the electric field wasn't changing, okay, if there was no current flowing, we wouldn't have this, okay, this would not happen. However, that is the generation. So the generation typically will be with some kind of moving charges. And of course, this also gets related to temperature changes because things might vibrate, okay, as well, and then move charges along with it. So there you have it. That's the propagation that you have. And overall, I have a pretty nice, okay, simulation from PHET for you. So you can also visualize it in a different way. So here you have it, okay? So here's another simulation, okay, that you have. And now, by the way, okay, this is only shown again, just one particular wave that you have. But the reality is, this is what happens, right? Where these things are changing back and forth, back and forth, okay? Right? And it's a field which is now spread out all over and it passes on. This is actually to do with radio waves, okay, that you have. Um, within here, in the PHET lab. Again, I'll put full kind of link to this if anyone is going to be interested in this. All right, so I hope that this gives you a sense and an understanding of how these electromagnetic waves are generated and then how they are propagating and how important it is to understand the electric and magnetic fields, okay, at a point. And of course, then you can now extrapolate it to all the points around which now these waves are propagating through. So there you have it, okay? Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.